Hey everyone, I'm Tyler. And this is my younger brother, Alex. And together, we're the Water Brothers. We're gonna take you on an adventure around the world to explore the state of our blue planet, a planet defined by water and its ability to sustain life. So join us on our journey as we explore the world, looking at the most important water stories of our time. And together, we will learn how to better protect our most precious resource. Canada is blessed when it comes to fresh water. For most of us, clean, potable water is pumped right to our homes, almost for free, and is available 24-7. But as it turns out, we are a very picky nation when it comes to water. Free, safe water just doesn't cut it. And why would we want something for free when we can get the same quality of water for a thousand times the price? So is bottled water really better or more convenient? Or have we just fallen for the most successful marketing campaigns of all time? This is Bottlegate. My brother and I were fascinated by the growth of the bottled water industry. And we wanted to learn how this industry and our own tap water at home was treated and regulated and to see if there really was a difference between the two. So where does bottled water actually come from? Does it all flow from remote mountain springs and glaciers? Or could most of it come from somewhere a little closer to home? We knew there were many reasons why bottled water has become so popular around the world. But here in Canada, it just didn't make sense to us why we consume so much of it. A few feet away from us at any given time of the day is potable water basically free from the tap. And yet, there's this growing bottled water industry, a multi-billion dollar industry now, that's developed to sell us something that's already available to us. And, and I just find that a little bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. It's a form of collective insanity, but people walk around with their, you know, their drinking apparatus. You know, you're gonna not believe this, but there was a day a long time ago when you left your house without water, you know? You never thought about it. You got water when you got to the next place. We weren't consumed with having to have water upon us every moment as if we're leaving for a desert vacation. What they call on-the-go lifestyle, you know? Yeah, it's convenient, it's on the go. Well, this is pretty convenient and on the go, and it cost me 0 .0 of a three, 3 cents to fill this up on my tap. Bottled water is hugely more expensive than tap water. On average, bottled water is 1,000 or 2,000 times more expensive than the water we get of similar quality from our taps. If we're consuming two bottles of the lowest priced bottled water per day, um, then the average Canadian is probably spending something like about $500 after tax dollars um, to, to buy water. That uh, grosses up to about $750. If you figure the median salary of a Canadian uh, is uh, currently, I believe, $28,000, that's 3% of your annual income being spent on, uh, on, on something that you could be getting for free and in fact are paying for already with your tax dollars. Water has been sold in bottles for centuries, but it wasn't until the 1980s and the arrival of a new lightweight type of bottle made with PET plastic that the boom of bottled water really began. PET is more durable, cheap to produce and easily recyclable. In the last 25 years, bottled water has emerged from near obscurity into the fastest growing sector of the entire bottled beverage market. And today, 60% of Canadians drink bottled water on a daily basis. And for some, it is their only source of drinking water. I haven't drank um, tap water in years. I think it's just our psychologically induced uh, idea that now that this is cleaner. It's convenient. Convenient? Yes. Yeah? It's cleaner. The tap water, I, I, I figure that there's always like stuff swimming around in it. <laughs> like, I don't know, I, I feel that it's like not as clean as bottled water. Parents tell you like, oh, tap water is bad for you, drink bottled water. So it's kind of like that yeah. assumption that we just t take. Isn't there a difference? Like, isn't um, bottled water more purified than tap water? So why do people think this? Is bottled water really cleaner than tap water? Perhaps these ideas have become so prevalent 
because we have been convinced that bottled water products offer more to us than tap water can provide. Obviously, it's, it's hard to understand the phenomena, isn't it? I mean, why would I pay for something when there's something equally good, at least on the surface, available for free? And any time that uh, we encounter that kind of behavior, we always tend to look for some external source of influence, and that's where marketing ends up getting blamed. In reality, though, marketing probably hasn't had a whole lot to do with it, not in this, not in this particular instance. Um, you see, the first thing that's happened here before bottled water got popular is water got popular. Uh, there, there is a huge cultural shift, especially amongst uh, better educated, more affluent consumers to be more health conscious. All of a sudden, to be healthy was at the same time to be cool. No different than wearing white earplugs to signify that you're listening to an Apple instead of some wannabe MP3 player. One of the reasons there's been a huge growth in the bottled water industry is that we're afraid of our tap water, or we don't like the taste of our tap water. Uh, and we've been made to be afraid of our tap water for a number of reasons. Um, one is that the regulatory systems we put in place require that if there's a problem with our tap water, which is tested many times a day, especially in the big cities, the public is informed right away there's a temporary problem with our tap water. So we hear news about problems with tap water every now and then. And there have been instances when our public water supplies have failed us, most notably in Canada during the Walkerton tragedy in 2000, when seven people died from E. coli contamination. Rare cases like this have contributed to a sense of mistrust about the quality of our tap water. And in over a thousand towns across Canada, many people still lack access to clean, safe tap water, especially among First Nations communities. So now you've got this rising demand for water and a diminished trust in the quality of water. So the bottled manufacturers didn't have to do anything except sit back and say, we're not that, we are something different. And in fact, if you look at the advertising of bottled water, they have never made, and in fact will never make, a claim that they are healthier than tap water. And the reason for that is, it's not true. We have to give people a, a motivation to make that adjustment. And in a sense, we almost have to make bottled water uncool. According to government and industry estimates, about 40% of bottled water is sourced from municipal supplies. Today, some of the largest bottled water companies in Canada are simply selling us refiltered tap water. While some bottlers do alter the minerals in the water to get a consistent flavor, others don't even alter the tap water at all. And as consumers, we often have no way of knowing. If somebody is simply taking tap water and putting it in a bottle, they should have to put that on the label. In the early 90s, bottled water was still a niche yuppie product. Around the time Seinfeld aired, the U.S. sales were around $100 million. By the time Seinfeld went off the air, around nine years later, that number had exploded to $5 billion. How did that happen? The public doesn't fully understand the, the way we provide water in our public agencies, our municipalities, how that water is collected, how it's treated, the standards that it has to meet. So there's an education problem as well. I think all of those things are contributing to a growing distrust of tap water and a growing assumption that because we pay so much for bottled water that it's got to be better, when in fact it, it doesn't have to be better and often isn't any better. So we went to visit the R.C. Harris Water Treatment Plant in Toronto to see where our water comes from and how it's treated. All right, so we're here with Ron Brilliant. Uh, he's the plant manager of the R.C. Harris Water Treatment Facility. How you doing today, Ron? I'm doing good. All right, so ready to check out what's uh, going on in this we plant? We certainly are. It's a very interesting plant. All right, let's get started. <laughs> you just can't get in like that. We have, to, we have security here. <laughs> there we go. That's a good starting lesson. Can't just walk in here. Toronto gets all of its water from Lake Ontario. Intake pipes reach two to three kilometers out into the lake to bring water into plants like R.C. Harris to undergo an extensive treatment process. This facility is one of the largest ones in North America and uh, definitely one of the largest ones in Canada. It 
supplies about 40% of the water for the city of Toronto and the region of York. It has the capability of pumping a billion liters per day. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's enough water that uh, you could fill up a Olympic pool in 3.8 minutes. We're actually in the heart of the treatment process now. Uh, this is the filter building. Uh, it's actually about 800 feet long. And what we're looking at now is actually the filters themselves. We have 40 filters in this plant. Water from Lake Ontario goes through an intensive five-step process to remove all particles, sediment, bacteria, and viruses from the water. Where we are right now, we're in the what we call the operator's lab. What you see here is we pipe water from every area of the plant where we do something to it. So we go from raw water directly from the lake to output water, this is drinking water. And what we do is we, all through those streams, everywhere throughout the plant, we have all kinds of instrumentation and we're continually monitoring uh, the water for various things, chlorine, fluoride, turbidity, and we have these instruments that record this every second. On top of this, uh, we take about 12 samples a day and we send that out to our full lab for complete analysis. Water is constantly being monitored and tested and daily samples of all city drinking water will end up at the Toronto Water Lab. Alex and I are here at one of Toronto's high-tech water labs where they do numerous tests to ensure that the water we're getting out of our taps is some of the cleanest and safest in the world. We provide sampling services and also we do all the analytical services for Toronto Water to ensure that our samples meet or exceed all the provincial water quality guidelines called the Ontario Drinking Water Standards. The most frequent one that we do is our microbiological parameters and they're tested uh, from water from the plants every six hours at the output. Our water is produced by staff who are very dedicated, they're professional and they're qualified to do their job. At the end of the day they all come home and they all drink the water and their families drink the water and so do I. We know that all our quality control parameters, all our results meet or exceed drinking water standards so it is very safe to drink. Meanwhile, the bottling industry operates under a different set of regulations. Even though bottled water and tap water must meet all the same federal guidelines for drinking water quality. Bottled water is regulated as a food product and the industry is allowed to self-monitor their water. Tap water is tested daily and while bottlers do test their water, there are no government guidelines for how often they must conduct these tests and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency is only required to inspect bottling plants every three to six years. And when bottled water is imported from foreign countries, it is entirely up to the bottling industry to inspect their own plants. When we heard that a pharmaceutical lab in Montreal was independently testing bottled water for levels of bacteria, we decided to check it out ourselves. One of the most publicized studies that you've done here uh, was in relation to bottled water. Can you just tell me a little bit about that study and how it got started? Two years ago, one of our employees got sick uh, after drinking water from a carboy that was available in the company and then she got sick. We started to look at the microbiology aspect of the water, if it's related to the water really. Surprisingly, we found out that the water is highly contaminated with high count of bacteria. Then we tested the other bottles, uh, container of the same brand of bottled water, and we found the same high count of bacteria. So we went to the normal uh, grocery store and bought 10 brands of uh, most commonly consumed bottled water in uh, Montreal. And that's how we started this study. And the results were so interesting that we couldn't stop ourselves to go ahead with this research. And what did the uh, results of the study show? 70% of the commonly used bottled water in Montreal is contaminated with such high number of microorganisms. It was a surprise to us. You're drinking water from that carboy, from that bottled water, and you find that high number of different heterotrophic microorganisms in that. Did you conduct any tests on tap water for comparison? Yeah, we did. We were surprised to see that tap water contained lesser amount of microorganisms as compared to the bottled water. And I can say 
that tap water is safer to drink, microbiologically safer to drink, as compared to different 70% of bottled water that are available in the market. What this Seacrest study showed us is that bottled water is just as susceptible to contamination as any municipal water supply, and neither source can be considered safer than the other. So it is not surprising that there have been 29 official recalls of bottled water products in Canada since 2000. One of the stats you hear a lot is that 40% of bottled water actually comes from municipal tap sources. So where does the rest come from? Well, a lot of it comes from aquifers, like the one I'm standing above right now. Aquifers are underground layers of water that lie within the sand, soil, and rock beneath our feet. The problem is that when we construct wells to access aquifers, we often extract groundwater much faster than it is naturally replenished. So these resources are at a much higher risk of being depleted when used unsustainably. So we must be very careful about how we use groundwater, especially when it is extracted on an industrial scale for commercial use. And in Ontario, it is up to the Ministry of the Environment to provide industry with permits to use groundwater. The permit to take watering laws that were in enacted by the province decades ago was never intended for someone just to take some water, put it in plastic, and sell it for massive profit. It was intended for municipalities so that they could secure water for their people. It was intended for farmers so that we knew how, many, how much water was being drawn from rivers or lakes for ag uh, agricultural products, for value added. And then it was also intended for value added industry. It was never intended for, to, to take the water and make money just from the water without actually any value added. And putting it in plastic, we believe, devalues the water. It actually reduces the value to society and it actually harms, um, uh, it actually violates this, one of the statement of environmental values of the ministry, which is, does it benefit future generations? No, it really, how can you argue that it does? Mostly provinces just give this water away to the bottled water industry. They don't charge them. If they charge them, they charge them a pathetically small amount. In Ontario, I think it's something like for industrial water use, $3.71 for a million litres of water. Well, I mean, that's just, it's an insult. They're not taking a little from here and a little from there. They have to build a plant and they have to take water from a particular water source, from a groundwater spring, an aquifer, a river, whatever. And they will pump and pump and pump from that single source. And you will see the trucks going down the highway, in some cases every few seconds, taking that water away to be bottled in a, in a plant somewhere. And so they are affecting individual water sources and that's what's important to understand. To be fair, the bottled water industry consumes less than 1% of available fresh water from the watersheds they draw from. But the problem with bottled water is not how much they use. It's that when they build one single plant over a single water source, that water source suddenly becomes a drinking water supply for millions of people outside that watershed. Most countries in the world dream of having water, clean water coming out of their taps instead of drinking out of plastic. Uh, and yet now we've gotten, become so affluent, somehow we think that going to this disposable society is, is better for us, it's, 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 a, it's cleaner. Last year, if you were to put all of the single bottles that we used for water, just water, not everything else, beer or orange juice or whatever, just water, uh, end to end, this is what we use globally, it, they would reach to the moon and back 65 times. I mean, think of the garbage that we are, we are unnecessarily placing into our world. Canadians drink a lot of bottled water, and one of the best ways to get a sense of just how much we drink is to go to a municipal waste transfer station, like this one in Toronto, where nearly half of the city's recyclable waste is sorted and organized before being sent off to get recycled. Just looking at this pile of uh, recyclable waste right here behind us, it doesn't take very long to find a lot of plastic water bottles, something that we don't need and is unnecessary when we have great public clean water. I'm here with John Baldry, who's the manager of processing operations for this waste. Hey, John, how are you doing today? Well, I'm glad to have you here. So you obviously receive a lot of plastic waste at a recycling facility like this. Do you have any idea how much bottled water or PET plastic you're receiving? At this facility, we receive approximately 300,000 of the individual single-serving plastic bottles. What portion of the city's recyclable waste does this represent? It represents about 45%, so in total, it would be safe to say that on a per day basis, we handle 700,000 of these bottles. 
and the, just water bottles. Alone, just water bottles. That's right. If you added the other soda bottles and so forth and so on, we'd be well over a million bottles a day that come through our two facilities. What happens to those plastic bottles when they get here? Well, as you can see, it's quite a mess here. The process is such that it separates by using automated equipment and hand sorting, and we will get those plastic bottles eventually to a stream where it's just plastic bottles, bail it, and ship it to market. If they don't end up here, where are they ending up though? Because obviously the recovery rates aren't 100%. No, if they don't end up here, they end up in a landfill. In Toronto, that means at least 65 million plastic water bottles are ending up in landfills every year. And even though the waste we looked at would all be recycled, recycling is a very energy intensive process. And if we really want to take energy conservation seriously, we must try and avoid creating waste in the first place rather than rely on recycling to solve all of our problems. And if there's one form of waste we can easily avoid creating, it is plastic from bottled water. The tremendous energy costs of producing bottled water it takes a huge amount of energy to produce the plastic and run the bottling plant and deal with the waste and to chill the bottled water and to move the bottled water from where we produce it to where we consume it. That's an energy cost and in the long run, a significant environmental cost to bottled water that consumers don't see and that the public ends up paying in environmental damage. If you were to take your average bottle of plastic bottle of water and, and fill it with the amount of oil it took to make that bottle, it would be a quarter full of oil, which is an awful image. And when you think about the fact that we're running out of energy to use any of that to make plastic to put water in, when you could get that water out of the tap, is crazy. Can people even taste the difference between tap and bottled water? And do they have a preference? One of these is bottled water, one of them is tap water. Let's see if you can taste the difference. Pretty much tastes like water either way, yeah. Water. You think that one's bottled water? Yeah. Do you like one over the other? No, they're both. Uh, they both taste yeah. the same? Yeah. This was uh, tap water and this was from a bottle. Actually, the opposite. Um, uh oh. You, you... you think that's tap water or bottled water? I think that one might be bottled water. Actually, the one you liked more was the tap water. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, look Save at that. In here. Which one did you like better? This one's slightly better, but it's not really much of a difference. You can't really tell it tastes a difference? I think this one. You prefer yeah. that one? Yeah. And do you think that's bottled water or tap water? Um, I think that's the bottled water. You're wrong. That is tap water. You like Toronto tap water better. <laughs> they both taste the same to me. They taste the same to you. Could you tell a difference in the taste? No, actually. I've, I've drank in uh, bottled water my whole life, and I couldn't even tell. Our blind taste test of over 100 students showed that 60% preferred the taste of tap water, 20% preferred bottled water, and 20% had no preference. Bottled water is a commodity. Uh, let's price it properly. Let's deal with the environmental impacts of bottled water. And let's make it as hard as possible for consumers to consume bottled water and as easy as possible to have alternatives, in particular, safe, affordable tap water uh, available. The good news is that a movement has already begun across Canada to turn away from bottled water and to make it easier for the public to embrace our local water supplies. And best of all, it is the younger generations that are leading the charge. Three years ago, started the Bottled Water Free campaign, uh, and it was two-pronged. It was one, to talk about uh, you know, the effects of bottled water uh, and to raise awareness about it and to get students to really uh, plug into the campaign. Uh, and the second was to get the university to actually sign a pledge to become the first university in Ontario uh, to pledge to be bottled water free. So by 2013, there will be no bottled water sold on campus. Yeah, well, we have clean water in Toronto, so might as well take advantage of it, right? Get it out of those landfills. And this is something that everybody can really participate in, right? It's not something that needs to be done by one person. All that plastic and everything kind of just goes nowhere at the end and that's harmful. Tap water's totally fine, you can save money, you don't need to buy all that water when you just have it access right there, right? Here at the University of Guelph, they've installed these really neat water fountains all throughout the campus that allow students to refill their stainless steel water bottles and help to reduce the amount of classic waste. And one of the neat features is it has a little counter here that shows you exactly how many single-use water bottles are not ending up in our landfills. Pretty cool. There's a growing movement across cities in North America and Europe to make it more convenient for people to find the nearest available tap water. 
and we wanted to help here in Canada. So we created a free app for smartphones called Quench that connects users to the closest public fountains and to businesses that offer free water and refills of reusable drinking containers. We've examined a lot of the problems with bottled water, like all the environmental impacts of this strange addiction we have. But where do we go from here? Can we really solve this problem by just not drinking any more bottled water? Realistically, we can't get rid of all bottled water. And whether we like it or not, it's part of our consumer culture. The question now is how much we should be consuming in places that already have safe tap water. Well, maybe there is a small place for bottled water in North America, but not as the dominant bottled beverage it is today more of a specialty product for certain situations. Well, either way, we take our public water supplies for granted here. And whether or not we choose to drink bottled water, that's a personal decision. The point is, across most of North America, our public water supplies are as clean and safe as any water in a bottle you can find. And we must never forget that over a billion people around the world don't have that luxury of turning on their tap and taking a drink. Well, I agree with you. Because despite certain fears people have with tap water, we still have a very safe public water supply. And a major solution to drinking less bottled water is so simple. 